North Rock Bikes. Congratulations on the purchase of your new bicycle. Today we're going to go over assembly of your bicycle. This particular bike has a quill stem and linear brakes. So the first thing we need to do is open the box. All the parts for your bicycle are in the box. We ship them uh, with the frame protected. Uh, you have the frame of the bike. Everything is attached to the frame other than your seat and the seat post, which you can just lay to one side. And a small parts box. It's labeled parts. Simply grab the bicycle, pull it out of the box, and carefully set it on the ground. So the first thing you want to do once you've removed the bicycle from the box is open your parts box, which contains your owner's manual and instructions for assembly. We recommend that you read your owner's manual before you begin assembly. You want to check the parts list on the assembly instructions. Make sure that all the parts listed came in the parts box or attached to the frame. The next thing we want to do is remove the protective packaging from the bicycle. Uh, you want to remember not to use anything with sharp edges. Uh, our staff mechanic at North Rock has been known to use nail clippers in a pinch. When the bicycle comes out of the box, the front wheel has the non-drive side crank arm located between its spokes. So when you're removing the wheel, it's important to carefully slide it or roll it forward until it comes free. Do not pull it away from the bicycle or else you risk damaging the spoke. So a couple of uh, considerations when you're removing the protective packaging. One is that the rear hub comes with a plastic protector. You do need to remove this, it's not a part of the bicycle. And the other consideration is that if you're not using a work stand to assemble your bicycle, you can leave the plastic protectors on the bottom of the fork to protect the bottom of your forks while you're assembling the bike. In packaging, the fork of the bicycle is facing backwards. We want to rotate the fork so that it faces the correct direction. There are three ways you will know the fork is facing in the right direction. The first is the arrow located on the crown of the fork. You want the arrow facing towards the front of the bicycle. The next is there is front printed on the front of the fork. And lastly, you want to make sure that all the cables attached to the handlebars are in front of the fork and that none of them have uh, become wrapped around the back of the fork in the process of facing the fork forward. Our next step is to install the stem and handlebars to the frame. The first thing we want to remove is the black protective cap on the base of the stem. Just pull that off. So the next thing we're going to do is insert the stem into the steering column of the bicycle. As a best practice, you want to put some medium weight grease on the inside of the steering column. So next we just want to drop the stem into the steering column. Take care that the minimum insertion mark is not showing outside of the bicycle. Next we want to line the handlebars up with the fork and tighten the bolt located on top of the stem. You want the bolt to be secure, but do not over tighten it because that can cause damage. Once you have tightened the bolt, insert the plug into the top of your stem. Our next step is to loosen the bolts on the stem cap, and then rotate the handlebars so that the brake levers are at about 45 degrees. When you are retightening the bolts on the stem cap, alternate as you tighten 
so that you achieve equal snugness in each bolt. Do not over tighten the bolts, that can cause damage. Our next step is to insert the seat and seat post into the frame of the bicycle. Our best practice is to put some grease into the frame, open the quick release, and insert the seat post into the frame. Take care that the minimum insertion mark is not showing, and close the quick release. Our next step is to open the front brakes. You want to grasp the brake arms, squeeze them together, and pull the brake noodle out of its housing. That allows the brakes to fall open. Next, we want to remove the plastic protectors from the hub. There's one of these located on each side. Next, we want to make sure that the wheel is facing the correct direction. Our bikes come shipped with an arrow. You should make sure that the arrow points in the direction of rotation. Tires with directional treading usually have an arrow printed on the sidewall that also indicates the direction of rotation. Now that we know the correct direction of the wheel and tire, we're going to install the quick release into the hub. Before you install the quick release, you want to make sure that the lever of the quick release will be on the same side of the bicycle as the lever on the back wheel. You want to unscrew the side of the quick release that does not have a lever on it, remove one of the springs, Insert the shaft of the quick release into the hub. Replace the spring so that the large side faces away from the hub. And screw the other side of the quick release on. We're now going to put the wheel into the fork. You want to remove the protective plastic from the fork blade. Drop the fork blades onto the shaft of the quick release. Make sure that the blades of the fork sit snugly in the wheel. Tighten the quick release using the side without the lever. Then grasp the lever and flip it. You will know it's properly snugged when it leaves an indentation on the palm of your hand. We now want to close the front brakes. Do this by reinserting the brake noodle into its housing. Next we're going to install your pedals on your bicycle. The pedals are labeled, they come with stickers, and left and right is stamped on the axle of the pedal also. First you're going to install the right pedal on the drive side of the bicycle. As a best practice, put some grease on the threads of the pedal. And begin by hand tightening the pedal into the crank. If the axle of the pedal does not tighten all the way flush with the crank using your hand, stop, back the pedal out, and try again. Once you have the pedal as far as it will go with your hand, use the included wrench to firmly tighten the pedal. When you install the left pedal onto the non-drive side of the bicycle, tighten it by turning the axle left, which is counterclockwise and opposite of what you're probably used to. Again, using only your hand, screw the axle of the pedal so that it is completely flush with the crank. Once you have done that with your hand, finish snugging the bolt with the included wrench. Next, you want to inflate your bicycle tires using a bicycle pump. 
The proper air pressure is printed on the sidewall of the tires. Next, we want to install the white reflector on the front of the bicycle. Now that the bicycle is assembled, we want to give it one last uh, look over before you ride it. So you want to make sure that the handlebars are in line with the fork. You want to give the handlebars a tug, make sure that nothing is loose. If you find looseness, tighten the bolts so that they're more snug. You want to do the same thing for the saddle. So stand behind it, see if there's any movement. If there is movement in the saddle, you want to tighten the quick release. Do that by opening it, tightening the screw located on the side opposite the lever, and closing the lever. The last thing you want to do before you ride your bike is to familiarize yourself with the brakes. The right-handed lever operates your rear wheel. The left-handed lever operates the front wheel. It's a good idea to just roll the bike back and forth for a while and make sure that the brakes are stopping the bicycle. Now that your bike is assembled, please read your owner's manual. Take your bicycle to a specialist to be looked over before you ride it. Thank you for choosing North Rock and have a great ride.